Hello friends. In this video we will discuss the surveying subject. We will discuss the most important asked multiple choice questions from surveying subject in all civil engineering competitive exam papers. Welcome to our channel. Civil Engineering Basics. For more videos please subscribe, Civil Engineering Basics. In the surveying telescope, crosshairs are fitted in front of the eyepiece. In the surveying telescope, crosshairs are fitted in front of the eyepiece. An imaginary line tangential to the longitudinal curve of the level at the center of the tube is called axis of the level tube. An imaginary line tangential to the longitudinal curve of the level at the center of the tube is called axis of the level tube. The image formed by the objective and the plane of crosshairs is real and inverted. The image formed by the objective and the plane of crosshairs is real and inverted. When the crosshairs are not clearly visible, the eyepiece should be focused. When the crosshairs are not clearly visible, the eyepiece should be focused. When the image formed by the objective is not situated in the plane of crosshairs the objective should be focused. When the image formed by the objective is not situated in the plane of crosshairs the objective should be focused. axis about which the telescope can be rotated in a horizontal plane, is called vertical axis. axis about which the telescope can be rotated in a horizontal plane, is called vertical axis. The brightness of the image varies inversely as the square of the magnifying power. The brightness of the image varies inversely as the square of the magnifying power. For removing the parallax, the eyepiece should be focused for distinct vision of crosshairs or the image of the object should be brought in the plane of crosshairs. For removing the parallax, the eyepiece should be focused for distinct vision of crosshairs or the image of the object should be brought in the plane of crosshairs. The capacity of a telescope of producing a sharp image is called its definition. The capacity of a telescope of producing a sharp image is called its definition.
In measuring horizontal angles, the theodolite should be turned clockwise from the back station to the forward station. In measuring horizontal angles, the theodolite should be turned clockwise from the back station to the forward station. In order to measure a horizontal angle more accurately than a vernier, a method of repetition is used. In order to measure a horizontal angle more accurately than a vernier, a method of repetition is used. A deflection angle in a traverse is equal to the difference between the included angle and 180 degree. A deflection angle in a traverse is equal to the difference between the included angle and 180 degree. An angle made by a survey line with the prolongation of the preceding line, is known as deflection angle. An angle made by a survey line with the prolongation of the preceding line, is known as deflection angle. In locating the details of an object whose direct measurement is not possible due to some obstruction, the method used is by angle from one station and distance from the other station. In locating the details of an object whose direct measurement is not possible due to some obstruction, the method used is by angle from one station and distance from the other station. In railway and highway works, the method of measuring the deflection angles method is generally employed. In railway and highway works, the method of measuring the deflection angles method is generally employed. The diaphragm of a stadia theodolite is fitted with two additional horizontal hairs. The diaphragm of a stadia theodolite is fitted with two additional horizontal hairs. The latitude and departure of a traverse line are both positive when the whole circle bearing of the line lies in the first quadrant. The latitude and departure of a traverse line are both positive when the whole circle bearing of the line lies in the first quadrant. When the latitudes and departures are so adjusted that the algebraic sum of the latitudes and departures are equal to zero, the operation is called balancing the traverse. When the latitudes and departures are so adjusted that the algebraic sum of the latitudes and departures are equal to zero, the operation is called balancing the traverse. When the whole circle bearing of a traverse line is between 90 degree and 180 degree, then the departure is positive and latitude is negative. When the whole circle bearing of a traverse line is between 90 degree and 180 degree, then the departure is positive and latitude is negative.
when the angular and linear measurement of a traverse are equally precise in traversing, the balancing of a traverse is done by Bowditch's rule. When the angular and linear measurement of a traverse are equally precise in traversing, the balancing of a traverse is done by Bowditch's rule. Thank you so much for viewing this video. For more video on civil engineering subscribe my channel. Civil Engineering Basics